dog, check. Coffee, check. Greasy, nasty old carburetor, check. All right, let's get started. Okay, in today's video, we're going to uh, look at the Kaihin three barrel carb. Um, we're going to find out, well, what makes it tick. Uh, we're not necessarily going to delve into the innards yet. Um, I'm going to save that for another video. But in the meantime, what I am going to do is figure out what all this stuff is. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through piece by piece. And uh, I'm going to tell you how it works. Um, I'm going to interlace this with footage that I used from the one that's on my car right now. Um, as you can see, this is kind of just a donor model. And, uh, well... Hopefully, I'll combine those two videos and it will congeal into something something viewable and informative. First, we're going to start with some pieces that are on the uh, air cleaner. And uh, that is going to be the air bleed valve, the intake air control diaphragm, and the air temperature sensor. first item we're going to look at is the air bleed valve. Uh, that's this item right here. And uh, what this does is it reacts to temperature and uh, it's actually hooked up to a vacuum line. That same vacuum line is also connected to this. And uh, when this gets cold it closes up. And uh, what that does is it creates more vacuum over here which opens a control door that's inside the intake here. And uh, when that door is open, it directs airflow, hot air coming up from the manifold um, into the intake air, um, allowing the, the engine to warm up a little faster, or at least to, to warm up the carburetor. Um, when it's hot, this valve opens up, and that basically creates a vacuum leak, which then allows this to lose vacuum which then closes the door and you get your cold air comes in through the regular uh, the regular tubing. And hiding down in here inside the intake is the uh, intake air temperature sensor and uh, that's actually tied to the same circuit that provides power to the choke coil heater. Um, I will cover that well, I can't cover it right now, but uh, that will be included in this video. This is the condensation chamber, and uh, this basically, well, combined with the valve cover, it basically acts like a PCV valve. It allows the crankcase to vent any vapors. Um, there is actually a separator it built into the top of this uh, valve cover that separates any liquid or vapor. Um, the vapor then vents to the condensation chamber and uh, what it does is it just takes those vapors or those fumes and it feeds them back into the carburetor. Now the thing is there is a tube underneath and you'll notice there's also a tube on top. Um, what happens is at idle or at low throttle um, it will pull the vapors down into underneath the uh, well into the base of the carburetor and uh, at full throttle part throttle or full throttle um, it takes the vapors up through the air cleaner and uh, goes through the top of the carburetor okay the next thing we're going to talk about is the choke I'll explain how the choke works in another video But uh, suffice it to say, when your car is cold or the air is cold outside um, and you first go to start the car, your choke should end up being in a mostly closed position. And there's several mechanisms on this carburetor um, that affect how quickly it opens, uh, also what to what degree that it opens up. 
Um, but first we're going to look at the innards of the choke itself. I'm very sorry. Um, there's a piece here. Obviously this is normally covered. Uh, there's a black cover on here and going to that cover are two wires and that is those wires heat up what is called the choke coil heater and uh, what that coil does is as it warms up it's like a big spiral and when it warms up it kind of unfurls and it ends up opening the choke as you can see Um, I tried to find that piece. I'm sorry, but I just could not find it. So you're just going to have to trust me. <laughs> However, uh, there is other mechanisms that also open the choke. And this is the choke opener diaphragm. And uh, vacuum to it is actually controlled by this thermo valve. This thermo valve controls airflow to it. Um, when the engine's cold it opens the choke just a tiny bit um, and when the engine heats up it allows full vacuum to pull on it and uh, it opens the choke completely. Another mechanism that will affect the choke um, is the fast idle unloader and that is right here and this is also vacuum operated there's a little diaphragm in there and when vacuum gets pulled on it this little arm inside here, that this arm right here, will basically, well, this mechanism would be sitting like this, but that little arm will pull the choke open and also pull the uh, fast idle cam off. Now, when you get into the car before you've started it and you push the gas pedal to the floor um, once or twice, that will set the fast idle cam and in theory you should be able to just let off the gas not touch anything start the car up and the car will idle at high speed um, now as the car heats up as the car heats up it will pull itself off fast idle however what you can do is give the throttle a, a blip and assuming the car is warm enough um, the fast idle will kick off and it will go back to operating at a normal idle speed. Um, this just is the thing that will kick in if you wait and give it time to override and it will pull itself off the fast idle cam. Okay next up is the throttle opener and that is this piece right here and uh, the throttle opener is there to improve combustion. Um, it holds the throttle open slightly uh, to admit more air during upshifts and when you and during deceleration um, above idle there's vacuum being held on it with a check valve and uh, when you decelerate the vacuum is slowly released which will allow it to uh, to close slowly essentially it just stops your revs from dropping too quickly when you let off the gas so when you go to shift up, uh, your, your RPMs don't drop too quickly. Now, as you could see, the RPMs didn't drop very quickly. Um, while most newer cars you can just blip the throttle and you'll watch the needle you know rise and then drop almost immediately so that's uh, that's because all because of this our next part here is called the secondary diaphragm and that's this piece right here and what that does is this opens your secondary your secondary butterfly on the on the throttle so I'm sorry about the angle here but I don't have a camera stand <laughs> or a tripod normally engine vacuum will be pulling on this and so as you can see it's sitting on the ramp there and uh, as we open the throttle it will ride along that ramp and as it goes up you can see that secondary butterfly on the right opening up 
until the maximum. And there's a little groove there. You can see in this little ramp here, there's a little groove that it reaches and that's kind of its the top of its travel. And as you can see that secondary butterfly is completely open. Okay, so now that we've covered this side, um, let's turn this around a little. And uh, on the back side here, uh, you can see this piece right here. And we'll keep turning. And that piece is wired to this piece as well. Uh, what these are is they're simply valves. Um, well, more like solenoids. So basically they're just safety devices. Um, so when you turn the car off, uh, any fuel flow to the main jets or the idle circuit uh, get blocked. Another part that's similar to that is uh, this piece right here. And while these are electrically operated, this one is obviously vacuum operated. You can see the, the tubing right here. And this is the air vent cutoff diaphragm. And uh, what this does is it controls the airflow to the float bowls that, uh, that hold the fuel. Um, when the car is off, it vents any vapors to the uh, it vents any vapors to the charcoal canister right here. And uh, while it's running, it vents any extra vapors to the uh, intake. Um, this piece right here is the idle boost diaphragm. And uh, I think most models or a lot of models won't have it. Uh, it's, based, it's there for cars with air conditioning. And uh, what it does is vacuum is applied um, when your AC is turned on. And uh, that vacuum pulls on a diaphragm, just like pretty much all of these work. And what it will do is it will pull on this. And all that does is it will open the throttle a preset amount and uh, that amount is actually adjustable and all it does is it essentially it just bumps up your idle for when your AC is on because the AC does provide a little bit of extra strain on the on the engine This is called an accelerator pump. Um, you will find one of these in some form or another in pretty much any carburetor. And uh, what it does is it's pretty simple. All it does is it injects an extra amount of gas into the intake flow when you punch the throttle. So if you go to accelerate quickly, uh, you're going to end up using this. And uh, so it's attached to the throttle so when you're hitting the gas and your throttle mechanism is opening up it's pushing against this rod and uh, normally if you weren't touching the gas this would be sitting this would be sitting like this so when you hit the gas it would come back like that and uh, what it does is it has that little tab on the bottom which collides with this piece right here. And that tab is adjustable. So if you go to rebuild a carb, or you need to tune your carburetor, um, that's something you end up needing to take a look at because that tab essentially dictates how much extra fuel is going to be injected when you punch the throttle. Um, not enough, and your car will hesitate and kind of stutter. Um, and the same will happen if there's too much. So what you end up doing is measuring the gap between these two pieces. But we will cover that in the next video. In the meantime, looks like I'm due for a refill.
And looks like somebody else is due for a refill as well.